Hey guys, this is the Part-Time Economist and this is another special video for my brothers and sisters out there in the military. In this video, I'm telling you about some of the different options you have when it comes to re-enlistment. Now, if you see the video here, I will show you how to determine your re-enlistment bonus. Re-enlistment bonuses and your re-enlistment options. Now, the way that you can do this is by going to armyreenlistment.com. This is probably the best site. It actually does a little bit better job of the official army in terms of keeping this up to date in a way that's easy to understand. So the first thing that you want to do is go to the virtual retention board and you will see different selective retention bonuses. Now in out calls we'll talk about that in a little bit so we'll go ahead and open that but let's go to selective retention bonus. Now click on the most recent message and let me show you guys how this looks so we go down here and it has the MOS so so far it's simple you find what MOS you are I was a 13 Fox so let's go down here to 13 Fox and we see that there's several of them now what we want to do is we want to find if any of these special things applies to us so we see that SQIs, ASIs, and language all have codes. So if I am a normal 13 Fox in Big Army, this will be my bonus schedule. If I am a 13 Fox in an SFAB unit, this will be my bonus schedule. So if you're a 13 Fox in Ranger Regiment, click Ranger Regiment. If you are a 13 Fox at an airborne position like 82nd, check this. Now, if you're just a normal 13 Fox, so let's assume that we're a normal 13 Fox, what we want to do is we want to go across and we want to see what tier bonus we have. Now, if you are a specialist, corporal, PFC, private, or a fuzzy, you are skill level one, okay? It's all the same. E4 and below, they just lump you guys together. Sergeants, staff sergeants, sergeant first class, you guys are each getting your own separate category. So let's say I'm a 13 Fox, I am a sergeant in big army, that puts me at skill a tier level six bonus. So now what I can do is I scroll down to the bottom of the page, let me keep going, and this tells me the tier level bonus. So remember I am a tier level six, I am a sergeant, and then my actual bonus amount depends on how long I re-enlist for. So the important thing here, the only reason that you need your MOS is to check what tier you are. So if you are a Okay, here's a good one. If you're a 91 Juliet Sergeant, you still get a tier level 6 bonus. So your MOS and rank determines what tier level you are, but then once you get to the actual tier, it's all the same regardless of what your MOS is. So a tier 6 for a 13 Fox Sergeant, and then it depends how much money you get based on the length of time that you re-enlist for. Now, I want to be clear that the re-enlistment bonus is a cash amount that is different than your re-enlistment option. So I can't really help the Marines, Airmen, and Sailors here, but for the Army, you have five options as far as re-enlisting. Now, the first option, which I do not recommend, is simple needs of the Army. If you use this option, essentially, you're not getting anything in return for your re-enlistment. You get to stay in the military for an extra couple years, but you don't get any incentive. So let me compare that to option two. Option two is current station stabilization. What this means is that let's say your son is a junior getting ready to become a senior in high school or your wife has one year left of medical school. What this option does is it keeps you in the same duty station for a certain amount of time so that your son can finish high school, your wife can finish her degree, or whatever other reason you might want to stay in the same location. The third option that you have is a training option. So if you use this option, you can go to airborne school, you can go to service schools that you probably couldn't get to. So a lot of people want to go to airborne school or want to go to ranger school and either their chain of command doesn't support it or they're facing stone walls getting the paperwork. If you use this re-enlistment option, you can go to Airborne, you can go to Ranger. I actually had one friend that re-enlisted for Airborne and another friend that re-enlisted for Ranger School. Option number four is Overseas Assignment of Choice. Now, I want to be clear, when you re-enlist with the option for Overseas Assignment, 
you are not guaranteed a specific base, a specific post. You're guaranteed an area. And just in case anyone tries to tell you different, I'm actually going to highlight that in the picture right here. So option four guarantees you an area overseas. Option five is choice of CONUS duty station. Now, in contrast to the overseas option, this option actually lets you pick exactly what post you want to go to. So you can go to Carson, you can go to Bragg, you can go to Fort Stewart. With all of these options, there is the caveat. So you can't go to a place that doesn't have your MOS. If you are a forward observer like I was, and the post that you want to go to doesn't have forward observers, you can't go because they don't have a slot for that kind of MOS there. But by and large, these are the five options you have when you are re-enlisting. Again, I want to say one more time that re-enlistment options are different from the bonus. So, if you choose needs of the Army, you will still get a bonus. If you choose to get an overseas tour, you will still get a bonus. If you choose to go to Airborne or Ranger School, you will still get a bonus. They are two separate things and you are eligible for both of them. So, I hope that's one more thing for you to consider when you're weighing staying in the military versus getting out. I try to present both sides as accurately as possible because I know that's something that a lot of service members don't get is kind of a middle ground, compromising, honest approach. So I want to be honest about both the benefits and the disadvantages of separating. Hopefully this gives you something to think about as you go into your re-enlistment window. I hope the video has been useful and I will see you in the next one.